Anansi was a half man, half spider, well known for his trickery. Anansi's stories originated in West Africa in the 1600s, when our ancestors were taken from their homeland as slaves, brought to the Caribbean and America, all they had left to remind them of their homeland and their heritage were these stories, which they shared with each other and their children, keeping it alive and allowing it to pass from generation to generation, enabling me to share it with you today. Today, Anansi stories are known throughout the world. This story is of Anansi and the Yam Hills. There was once an old woman with magical powers. Five was her name. No one knew why her parents named her Five, but she hated it. All the children in the village would make fun of her, giggling as they went past, calling, give me five, or you're still only five? When are you going to read six? Some of them said she was a witch, but they didn't know for sure. When she grew up, she decided to put an end to the name calling by casting a spell. She said that anyone who used the name five would disappear. This caused great fear through the village. Nobody could use the word five without disappearing. Children could no longer recite their five times table. On using their fingers on their toes to count, as soon as they got to the number four, they would suddenly stop. The adults had to drop the word five from their vocabulary. In this village, the unlucky number was no longer 13, it was five. Once a customer asked a merchant, how much was the t-shirt? Which one, the merchant answered, four or five? Suddenly there was a loud swish. The merchant disappeared before he could finish the sentence. He disappeared right in front of the dumbfounded customer's eyes. Now, in the same village lived a crafty spider named Anansi. He lived with his wife and children. Times were very hard and he had no food to feed his family. He had heard about the witch's spell and began to wonder how he could use it to his own advantage. Anansi was very small. Some say he was half man, half spider, and not a good worker. So he had to rely on his brains and his wit to get him whatever he needed to survive. So one day he said to himself, things are getting tough for me. I must make the witch's spell work for me. The following morning, very early, Anansi went to the road which led to the village marketplace. He chose a spot on the side of the road that everyone on the way to the market would have to pass. There, under a large guango tree, he decided to pile up five molds of rich brown soil. These molds he called yam hills. At the top of each hill, he planted an African yellow yam. Then he drove a stake next to the yam on which the vine would grow. And Nancy carefully watered the yams until they began to spout. Then he carefully weaved a web up in the guango tree and patiently waited for someone to come by. Early one morning, as the yam shoot had pushed its head out of the molds, and Nancy climbed down from the tree and sat next to his yam hills. Soon, Brother Dog came by on his way to the market. Dog had a basket carefully balanced on his head of sweet smelling fruit. Good morning, brother dog, said Anansi in his sweet sugary voice. I know that you are busy and I feel so stupid. I'm not educated like you. So I'm asking, could you please help me count how many yam hills I have planted here? 
dog, in a very rough voice, replied, You should have gone to school and learned how to count, as he carried on his way to the market. And Nancy realized he would have to do better and climbed back up into the guangu tree and waited. Soon to follow was Brother Ball, carrying a large basket of fruit on his head. Good day, Brother Bull, said Anansi in a very low toned voice. Could you just spare me one minute of your time, please? He begged. What can I do for you? Brother Bull asked. Anansi replied, I was a naked, sickly child, so my parents didn't send me to school. So I never learnt my ABC or how to count. I have planted all these yam hills but I don't know how many there are. Can you help me count them? But of course, Brother Bull replied with a smile. You have one, two, three, four, five, swish! As he said the number, Brother Bull disappeared in the air. The basket of sweet, ripe fruit that he'd been carrying on his head fell to the ground and Nancy snatched up the basket of fruit and rushed home to eat them all. For a long time, and Nancy did very well, continuing to trick passers-by into counting his yam hills. He grew fat from all the basket of fruit and food he had gathered. Brothers Turtles, Brother Mongoose, Piniwali, the Firefly, and even the tough Brother Scorpion. Then, one day, along came Mrs. Guineafowl with her newly hatched children. She could not say no to anyone. She and her husband shared the chores of selling their produce in the village market. That day, it was her turn to go to the market. As she got closer to the yam hills, Nancy was nowhere in sight. Just as she was about to pass yam hill number four, Nancy the spider lowered himself from his perch in the guangu tree. He called out in his sugary voice, Good morning, Mrs. Gillyfowl. Could you please help me with a problem? Of course, she replied, bright and bubbly. And Nancy said, I have these yam hills here and I don't know how to count. Will you help me please? And Nancy begged. Mrs. Guineafowl, who had seen a Nancy trick brother Scorpion, walked over to the last yam hill and climbed up on top of it. She said, you have one, two, three, four, and the one I am standing on. What? shouted Anansi. What are you doing? That's not the way you count, he said angrily. What do you mean, Anansi? Mrs. Guineafowl said. Anansi responded, I don't know of any number called the one I am standing on. Start again, he ordered in a frustrated voice. Mrs. Guineafowl began again. You have one, two, three, four, and the one I am standing on. That's not what you're supposed to say, Anansi shouted even more angrily. Well, she said, if you're so smart, what am I supposed to say, she asked. Anansi shouted, you're supposed to say one, two, three, four, five, whoops. Suddenly, Anansi disappeared leaving Mrs. Guineafowl with the food he had gotten from his trickery of his victims. And the moral of this story is that greed never pays.